for players poised to take on one highly unpredictable machine. At stake, a £10,000 jackpot. This is Tipping Point. Hello and welcome to Tipping Point. Let's meet the four players all hoping to win thousands today. I'm Kate, a charity fundraiser from Bristol. I'm Lee, a financial liaison manager from West Yorkshire. I'm Ellie, a roofer from London. And I'm Peter, a retired electrician from Port Call. Good luck to you all. Let's play Tipping Point. So in round one, you each start with three counters. Questions are on the buzzer. If you buzz in and give me a correct answer, you'll have a choice to make. You can either choose to play one of your counters into the machine, or if you think the machine isn't quite ready, you can get one of your opponents to play one of theirs instead. Most of the counters you get out of the machine will add £50 to your score. That includes our mystery counters, which, of course, come with a bonus prize, but also nestled in the machine. We do have two double counters. Now, if one of those drops for you, it will double the entire value of your drop, and should one fall with a jackpot counter at the end of the game, you'll be leaving £20,000 richer. However, do remember, the player with the lowest score at the end of this round will have to leave the game. So keep an eye on those double counters, because they could make all the difference. Right, everybody ready? Hands on your buzzers, here comes your first question. In recognition of outstanding achievements, a gold badge featuring a famous ship logo, Ellie. Blue Peter. Is awarded to viewers of which long-running children's TV show it is? Blue Peter, Ellie. Yes, very nicely done. First correct answer is yours, so you get to make the first choice. Would you like to play or would you like to pass? Um, I'd like to pass, please. OK, to Kate, Lee or Peter? Peter. Peter. You get the honour of launching the machine today. Where do you want to go, Peter? I'll go for drop zone one, please, man. Let's do drop zone one, please. <laughs> Quick drop. Nice settle there, Peter. And then going over the top shelf, you might just split them. Ooh, just did exactly that, Sandy. Ouch. Nothing from that first drop. Mm. Nice pass by Ellie. Peter, you've got two counters still to play, OK? Next question. Which female monarch became the Canadian head of state in 1952? Kate. Queen Elizabeth II. Yes, that's right, Kate. Now, would you like to play? Um, I will play, please. Where do you want to go? Drop zone one, please, Ben. Drop zone one for Kate. <laughs> Rapid drop. Frenzy to come down. See, and then going over the top shelf. Oh, Ooh, nothing for you either, no. like Peter. You've just set up that top shelf. Mm -hmm. So nothing with your first drop, Kate. You've still got two counters left to play as well. Next question. As of 2019, which major FIFA World Football Tournament has been won by Brazil, Lee? The World Cup. A record five times it is the World Cup. Yes, the FIFA World Cup. Lee, are you going to play? I uh, certainly will. Yeah, I'll go drop zone one, please. Drop zone one for Lee. Nice settle. Should take out a few of those counters that have been set by the others. Does just that. Ooh. Nice one. That is the tipping on. point ready. Just the <sighs> one there, Lee. £50 does go across the tipping point. Let's take that from the machine, Lee, and put it into your bank. It gets you off the mark with £50. Thank Still you. Still got two counters left as well, Lee. Next question. Excluding the Jokers, how many red suited playing cards are there? Peter. 26. In a standard deck, there is 26. Good knowledge, Peter. That was quick. Right, do you want to play? Yes, please. Where do you want to go? I have to go for drop zone one, I'm afraid. Drop zone one. It's looking good, isn't it? Fire up one, please. <laughs> now, we need something over that top shelf, Peter. Oh, look. It looks very busy. Is it going to go for you, Peter? How big is it going to be? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Great stuff. Well done. <laughs> well done <Peter. laughs> Nine for you there, Peter. So £450. Excellent. Very nicely done. Let's take that from the machine and put it into your bank. Put you on £450. And you've got one counter still to play as well. Next question. A lady with a lamp, I see, is a line from an 1857 poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow about Florence who? Ellie. Nightingale. It is Florence Nightingale. Just beat Lee to that one. <laughs> Now, Ellie, do you fancy having a crack this time? Yeah, I think I'll go for drop zone one still, please. Still a bit more action there. Yeah, I think Let's so. see what we can do. Fire one up. Oh, 
That's a nice Thank spot. You. Should work. Come on. Yeah, here we go. We clean that top shelf out. All of you. And the bottom. Yeah, not bad there, Ellie. Well Thank done. Thank you. <laughs> Six counters. £300 for you, Ellie. Just what you needed. Let's take that from the machine and put it into your bank. That's going to put you in second place on £300. And you've still got two counters left to play as well. Here comes your next question. In the title of a 2018 film, which bumbling spy character played by Rowan Atkinson? Lee. Johnny English. Strikes again. It is Johnny English, Lee. Yes. Now, would you like to play or would you like to pass? It's a tricky one, is this. I will play it and go drop zone two, please. Drop zone two for Lee, then. Let's do it. First time we've ventured out of drop zone one, which has well and truly been rinsed, certainly on the top shelf. There's a gap oh. right there, isn't it? That's the one place you didn't want it, I don't think. Exactly that. Mm, Good mind. Sorry, Lee. Thank Nothing you. from that drop. You've just filled that hole, moved that mystery mm. forward. You've got one counter left to play. Next question. Founded in South Africa, which restaurant chain popularised grilled chicken served in a piri... Lee. Nando's. Piri, piri, marinade. It is Nando's. <sighs> of course it is. Right then, Lee. You played last time. Nothing came out. You've got one counter left. What are you thinking? I think I'm going to let Kate play. Right, a bit of pressure on you okay. here, Kate. Where do you want to put this one? Um, I'm going to try drop zone two, please, Ben. Let's have two for Kate, then, please. No mistakes here. We need a good drop if we can. Nicely timed. Well done. Very central two. Mm. Or is it going to split yeah, them? It's gonna split them. It oh, is, no. isn't it? You can just see it. <laughs> A little bit on each oh. column, not enough on either. Every time. You've got one counter left to play. OK, next question. Also known as the bloodstone, the heliotrope is a green gemstone that contains spots of which primary colour, Peter? Red. It is red, yes. Well done, Peter. Now, one last counter for you. Would you like to play it or would you like to pass? I shall play and I go for four, Ben. Let's have drops over four, please. There we go. Didn't want to settle for you there, yeah, Peter. I think it's all right. Flat. Oh, you're OK. Flat. Very lucky. Let's see if we can squeeze something over that top shelf. Maybe shift that double. Might get a little nudge. No. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Anything on the tipping point, though? No. Oh, and Ooh. one sneaks into the wind zone, Peter. Well done. <laughs> 50 pounds for you there. Let's take that from the machine and put it into your bank, and that's going to leave you on £500. You have now used all three counters, Peter, so for the time being, you are out. Uh, so, Kate and Lee, you've both got one counter left each. Ellie, you've got two. Next question for the three of you. The two members of the Rolling Stones that are often referred to as the Glimmer Twins are Mick Jagger and Keith Lee. Richards. Keith Richards, you're absolutely right. Right then, Lee, one last counter for you. What are you thinking? I'm going to have to play... Yeah. And I think I'm going to go drop zone two, please, Ben. Drop zone two. Let's see if it works. Fire up. Drop zone two, please. Oh, Lee. Is it going to go in the gap? There's not much there, is there? Oh, oh. no. Never mind. Two counters for you there, Lee. Mm. Just filled holes on that top yeah. shelf of drop zone two. Oh, that's brutal. I'm sorry. Nothing from that one as well. So you stay on 50 pounds. You have now used all three counters. For the time being, Lee, you are out. It's just Kate and Ellie left in. Next question for you two. Charles X was overthrown and replaced by Louis Philippe during the 1830 July Revolution in which European country, Kate? France. It is France, yes. Right, Kate, would you like to play or pass? I'll play, please. OK, where are you going to go? I'm going to try drop zone four, please, Ben. Drop zone four? Let's do it. Fire up, please. Brave move this, Kate. Let's see if it works. You need at least 50 pounds to catch Lee. I know. Slides and settles nicely. Oh, please. Is it going to get anything over the top shelf? I'm not sure. Yes. Come on, come on, go on. Please get me one. Is the bottom going to go? Go on. Oh, no. Just keep an eye on that <laughs> black counter. Oh, you've got another crack at it. You've got another crack at it. Lee can't believe it. Yep. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Well, done. <laughs> well done. Kate, seven counters drop across the tipping point. 
It's important because when we take it from the machine and put it to your bank, it puts you ahead of Ellie on £350. You've now used all three of your counts, so for the time being, you're out. Right, Ellie, it is okay. just you. Because uh, it's just you, you don't need your buzzer. You do need to give me the correct answer to both these questions to put those counters into the machine. Here we go, Ellie, your first question. What kind of pudding were the singers demanding in the festive song, We Wish You a Merry Christmas? Is it figgy pudding? It is figgy pudding, yes. Well done, Ellie. Right, so your first counter is yours. Where do you want to put it? I'd like to go for drop zone two, please. It's looking good. OK, drop zone two it is. Now, can it move that mystery down? Is it just going to slide into one? Ooh, something's gone over the top shelf. 50 pounds catches Kate. Nah, it just shuffles the shell. <laughs> so you stay on 300 pounds there, Ellie. Right, again, got to give me the correct answer to put this counter into the machine. Here we go. The Claret Jug is awarded to the winner of the British Open Championship in which sport? Is it golf? It is golf, oh, yes, <laughs> it is golf. Well done. Lee, I'm so sorry for you that's bad because it means you've got nothing to play for in the post spot, so we will be losing you at the end of the round, I'm afraid. Fine. Uh, Ellie, one last counter for you here. Where do you want to put it? Uh, I'll try to drop zone two again, please, Ben. Two up, please. Basically dropped that one, wasn't it? Mm. Heavy settled now. Can we get you some money? Anything? Four counters. We'll catch Peter. Oh, no! Uh, still oh, nothing no. across the tennis <laughs> point. Wow. <laughs> so the scores stay as they were, and that means Peter is leading with £500. Kate is in second with £350. Just ahead of Ellie on £300. Lee, I'm so sorry, but that does mean with £50 we have found your tipping point. Thank you for playing, Lee. Thank you very much. Great to meet you. So join us after the break to see which of today's three remaining players will win through to our head-to-head -head and a shot at a £10,000 jackpot. See you in a bit. If you'd like a brand new Tipping Point experience, then why not try Tipping Point Blast? You can download it on Google Play and the App Store for free and play wherever you are, whenever you like. Stanford, proud sponsors of Tipping Point. Welcome back to Tipping Point, where Kate, Ellie and Peter have all survived to play in round two. In this round, they'll each have 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. Every correct answer will give them a counter to play into the machine. As before, the player with the lowest score at the end of the round will be leaving the game. So, Peter, you are leading, so it means you get to choose. Would you like to play first, or would you like to offer it to Ellie or Kate to play instead? I'm normally very well-mannered, but I think this time I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 30 seconds for Peter, please. Your time starts now. Which famous public school did someone attend if they are described as an old Etonian? Eton. Correct. Harold Macmillan was a former leader of which major British political party? Conservative. Correct. How many individual small coloured squares appear on each face of a standard Rubik's Cube? Nine. Correct. Which food writer and cookery show host has released books called At My Table and Simply Nigella? Nigella Lawson. Correct. In which Olympic sport are there lifts called snatch and clean and jerk? Weightlifting. Correct. In the Bible, Aaron and Miriam are the siblings of which Hebrew prophet? Pass. Moses. Oh, Peter, five out of five, though, up till then. Very nicely done. Thank you. Five correct answers is five counters to put into the machine. Uh, so where would you like to start? Well, I think drop zone two is defying gravity at the moment, so it has to be zone two. Please. Drop zone two? Please. Let's do it. Fire up drop zone two, please. It is its way down, settled nicely. Is it just going to fill a gap? Oh, no, you're OK. Now, there's a double in amongst all of those counters. But still in there. Right, Peter, you've got four more to go. Staying with drop zone two? Yes, please. Fire it up. Slams down, settles nicely. That should be good. Should be. Will it be? Yes. It's a fair few over. Broad shove. Oh, now then. That's a nice drop. Eight counters, Peter. £400. You open your account with a nice drop there. You've still got three more to go. Staying with drop zone two? I'll move to drop zone three, please. Fire up three, please. Sneaks out. Settled well. And then going over the top. Yep, a couple there. The tipping point going to go. No, it's not. So, you're down to your last two now, Peter. I'll stay with uh, drop zone three. Please. Lovely. Three up, please. <laughs> it 
Similar spot. So the top should drop for you. It does. And the bottom should be better now. Are we going to add to your 400 pounds? Yes, we are. Another three there, Peter. So we're up to 550 pounds in the machine. And I've got one more counter to go in. Drops on three. Fire up three, please. And a lot all the way across two and three, isn't there? Whips down, settled well. Anything going over the top shelf here? Yes. Now, finally, you're going to get a decent drop. No! <laughs> <laughs> Better than nothing. One counter did go, though, so we can add another £50. So that takes you to £600 in the machine. And let's take that from the machine and put it into your bank, and that will leave you on £1,100. So, Kate, you are just ahead of Ellie, which means you get to choose. You could play next or you could ask her to play. I'll play, please, Ben. OK, 30 seconds for Kate, please. Time starts now. In the traditional UK version of Cluedo, what primary colour is the piece representing Colonel Mustard? Yellow. Correct. Egypt became part of the Roman Empire following the death of which queen? Uh, Cleopatra. Correct. Which constellation is represented in the International Astronomical Union code by the letters LIB? Libra. Correct. Often used for football matches, the Stade de Suisse is a stadium in which European country? France. Switzerland. The 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia is set during which war? World War II. One. What type of nut is... Oh. Out of time in this one. What type of nut is traditionally used to top a Dundee cake? Did you know? Oh. Uh, Peter knows, he just almonds said it. Yeah, it is an almond. You would have been right. We're out of time. You got three correct answers there, Kate. Three counters here to try and close the gap. What are you thinking looking at the machine there, Kate? Um, I'm going to go for three, please. Let's do drop zone three. Oh, that silver one Ooh, fell suddenly. That's not going to help you there because it's just riding. You have got a couple over. That double could go too. It's close. It's close. <laughs> oh. oh, you just filled a gap. Oh, gosh, where do I go now? Where do you want to go next, Kate? I'm going to try drop zone two, please, Ben. OK, let's have two, please. So that silver one did fall. Yeah, they'll be yours. <laughs> but it just feels the yeah. gap. Let's see what happens, though. Moving over into one. Could get a couple here. Yes, you okay. do. Well done. So it worked nicely in the end. That's lucky. So that's six across the tipping point, Kate. Those first three counters fell when you were in control of the machine, so they are yours. So you're up to £300. And you've got one more still to put in as well. So where would you like to go now? I'm going to try drop zone two again, please, All ben. right, let's have two again, please. Nine more to catch Peter, which is only five with that double, which is super close. Goes down the right-hand side. Oh, is it far enough? No, it's not. The lat count's oh. going to go. There's a few that could go. Oh, it's an oh, extra! No. Come on! No! Oh, <laughs> horrifically harsh, that, Kate. Unfortunately, didn't quite do the damage that we would have liked. But £300, though, let's take that from the machine and put it into your bank, Kate. And that's going to leave you on £650. Right then, Ellie, we come to you. 30 seconds for Ellie, please. Your time starts now. In the human body, astigmatism is a condition I... affected... Correct. The legendary light entertainment presenter who hosted the TV quiz at Didn't They Do Well was Bruce who? Forsyth. Correct. Often eaten in sushi or sashimi, maguru is a Japanese word for which fish? Salmon. Tuna. Who is the youngest son of Prince Charles and Diana, Princess of Wales? Harry. Correct. RMS Carpathia was famously the first ship on the scene after the sinking of which passenger liner in 1912? Titanic. Correct. The opera known in English as the Pearl Fishers is by... Out of time in this, but it's by which 19th century French composer? Did you know? Georges Bizet. Four correct answers for you there, Ellie. Four counters to try and close the gap on Kate, which is £350, so seven out. What are you thinking? I really want to go for that double counter, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go for drop zone two to start, please. Let's do it. Fire up two, please. There's only four counters with the double to catch Kate. Should certainly go. Get something in the right place. That's not bad, is it, as a start? It looks OK. Here we go. Is it going to happen? There's the double. Oh, Ellie! 
That's 21 across the tipping point with the double. So let's see what that does to the score. 21 counters in itself is a cracking score. It's 1,050 pounds, but we can double it up and give you another 1,050 pounds. And you've still got three more to put in as well, Ellie. Where would you like to go next? I think I'll go for drop zone four, please, this time. OK, let's have drop zone four. Plummet drop Ooh. there, slam down. Let's see. Anything? Mystery going over. Yes, it is. You might just feel the tipping point. You might take that black counter down. Mm. Nope, doesn't want to go just yet. OK. Two more to go, Ellie. Uh, I'll try drop zone four again, please. Four again. <laughs> Bit more central. Ooh, yeah. There's a few more on the tipping point there, isn't there? In case you needed them. Flip nicely. Anything going to go here? One more one. sneaks in. Let's give you 50 pounds okay. for that one. <laughs> Takes you to 2,150. And one more to put in then, Ellie. I'll go drop zone four again, please. One last hit on four, please. Yeah. Yeah, nice settle. Mm. Anything going to come over here? Some more. Something. <laughs> Tip one going to go. There's a bit of a gap. But it's going to go. Oh, oh they're no. going to resist your charms, Ellie. But £2,150 is a great score, so let's take it from the machine and put it into your bank. And at the end of the round, we have a new leader. Ellie is leading with £2,450. Peter has £1,100. Kate, I'm so sorry, but that does mean with £650, we have found your tipping point. Thank you for playing. Thank you. Goodbye. Lovely to meet you, Kate. Uh, so it is Ellie and Peter who will be going head-to-head -head after the break for the right to play for our £10,000 jackpot. Now, though, it's your chance to win an amazing cash prize. So, who's going to be the first to answer? HSL Clever Comfort, proud sponsors of Tipping Point. Welcome back to Tipping Point. Just two players remain, Ellie and Peter. Well done to both of you for getting this far. We're about to find out which one of you is going to be taking on the machine for our jackpot today. Now, in this round, you're each going to be asked three questions alternately. On your question, you can choose to answer, or you can pass it to your opponent. If you give me a correct answer, you put the count into the machine. If you give me a wrong answer, your opponent puts the counter into the machine. And whoever has the most money at the end of this round will be today's winner. Uh, Ellie, as you are leading, you get to choose. Would you like the first question, or would you like to offer it to Peter? I can't wait. I'll take the first question. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go, then, Ellie. First one for you. Which actress plays the title character in the 2019 film Captain Marvel? You can play this or you can pass it to Peter. Do you think he's into his superhero films? Mm, I don't know. I think he's got a good poker face. I don't think I'll be able to tell either way. But I know that I definitely don't know the answer, so I'm going to pass it. <laughs> right, Peter, here's your chance to show the kids a thing or two. Have you seen it? Are you no. aware of it? Who is he? <laughs> it's definitely a she. It's a she? Yeah. Oh. We're looking for an actress. Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. Yeah, no uh, Okay. Idea. Ellie, if Peter would pass this to you, did you have any ideas who might you have gone for? I know what she looks like. She's blonde, but I have no idea what her name is. You can't so think of her name? No. OK, let's see if you're right, Peter. Captain Marvel. Is she played by Kate Winslet? No, it's Brie Larson. Brie Larson is the name of the actress. Kate Winslet could have done it, I'm sure, and she would have been superb at it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, Ellie, you get the counter, because Peter was wrong. Where do you want to go? I'll try to drop zone four, please. Yeah, let's do it again. Fire up four. I wanted it. Nice settle yeah. then, let's see. Yeah, this could work. Something. Nice broad shove. That mystery's going to move forward. Oh, oh, and a good drop there for you, Ellie. <laughs> Just in case you needed more. Nine counters for you, Ellie. So £450 to add in. Let's take it from the machine and put it into your bank. And it just keeps going up. £2,900 is what you've got. Right, Peter, we come to you. Time for your first question. Which of Henry VIII's wives was the mother of Queen Mary the First. You can play this, Peter, or you can pass it to Ellie. Anne Boleyn? Ooh, you've gone straight in. You could have passed that one. Oh, I could have, too. Yeah. You confident about Anne Boleyn? Possibly. <laughs> Getting less so by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Ellie, if Peter had passed this to you, would you have said Anne Boleyn? 
Uh, that's the only one I can think of, so I would the have said that one. The only one you could have thought. <laughs> okay, she's definitely one of his wives, but was she the mother of Queen Mary I? Is it Anne Boleyn? No, it was Catherine of Aragon. Oh, I knew one of that. Elizabeth I was Anne Boleyn's daughter, yeah. of course. Uh, Ellie, you get the counter, so you can extend your lead mm. further here. What are you thinking now? There's quite a lot of gaps in two and three and four. <laughs> I think drop zone one has... We haven't tried that in a while, so I'll go there. Drop zone one, let's yeah. do it. Fire it up, please. Now, that'll Ooh. just fill a hole on the top shelf, won't it? Yes. There's one of those gaps you're talking about. <laughs> yes, found it. <laughs> so, fortunately, no damage done there, Felix. Mm. Ellie, keep control, though. Time for your second question. The Canadian province of British Columbia has a coastline on which ocean? I think I might know it, but I'm not entirely sure, so I'm going to pass. OK. You ever been to British Columbia, Peter? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. OK. I have, yeah. Right, so you know the area. Did you happen to go in the sea? In the Pacific, I did, yeah. Did you go in the Pacific? Yeah. So we would you suggest that that's the answer? Yeah. The Pacific Ocean? Ellie, what were you thinking? I was going to say the Atlantic, so... <laughs> you were going to say the Atlantic? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Peter's been there. He's been in the sea there, and he thinks it was the Pacific. There it was. Oh, well, well done, done Peter. <laughs> so, you can get a count now. Where are you going to go? Drop zone one. OK, let's give it a go. Fire one up. That's about uh, Glad. rain. Oh, it is oh, as no. well, Peter. <laughs> Peter. That's horrific. It was all going so well. It was. <laughs> so nothing there, I'm afraid. You keep control, though. Time for your second question, Peter. From 1963 to 1986, which racing circuit alternated with Silverstone as host of the British Formula One Grand Prix? You can play this, Peter, or you can pass it to Ellie. I'll pass it to Ellie. You're please. passing it over? Yeah. Ellie, how many racing circuits do you know? I know of one other one, so I'm going to go for that one right. and say Brands Hatch. You've gone with Brands Hatch. Has Ellie got the right answer? Let's see. Is it Brands Hatch? It is. <laughs> Great answer, Ellie. Well done. Thank you. Where would you like to put the counter? I'd like to go for a mystery if possible, so drop zone one, please. Let's try one up. Left or right? Hammers down yes. the left. Yep. Stay there. No, no <laughs> it doesn't want to drop. It doesn't want to drop. Never it's going to stay there. It is going to stay there. Pinned to the top shelf. So, Peter, no damage done there. Ellie, you keep control, though. Time for your third and final question. Robert Plant was most famously the lead singer of which British rock band? You can pass this to Peter. Do you think he knows his rock bands? I think he might do. I think it's more his era than mine. <laughs> uh, I don't think I know it, so I'm going to pass. Right, Peter, we could do with a steal here. Led Zeppelin? Led Zeppelin. Let's see if you're right, Peter. We need this. Is Robert Plant the lead singer of Led Zeppelin? Yes, absolutely right, Peter. So, let's try and get you something from this machine here. What are you thinking? Drop zone one. One up, please. Surely we can get it out this time. So just get those few cans in the corner over. Oh, not that side. Bit of lateral. Take that silver one in the middle out. There, go on. No, Peter! I can't believe it's not going. Oh, you've had no joy. Good news is, though, Peter, you keep control. One last question. Time for your third and final one. The Cask of Amontillado is an 1846 short story by which American horror writer? You can pass this to Ellie if you're not sure. I'll pass it to Ellie. Please. Good idea. Yeah. Ellie. Thank you, Peter. Right. <laughs> How many American horror writers do you know from uh, 1846? I know of Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula. And that's the only kind of thing I could think of that may be from that period. Might be a bit later, but I'll go for Bram Stoker. Oh, a little ambient drop, but it's not changed anything. So, Bram Stoker, Ellie's given us as a guess. Peter, did you have any ideas? Not really, no. Not really? No. Let's see if you're right, Ellie, if you are. You've got one last counter. If not, Peter's got one last crack at this. 
is the answer Bram Stoker. No, it's Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. Edgar Allan Poe. Bram Stoker was Irish. It's a good guess, though, Ellie. It really Thank was. You. Uh, right, Peter, one last crack. Drop zone one, please. Drop zone one it is. Just 36 counters to catch Ellie. Come on, machine. Get over, get over. Has no, it gone? Really it go. Is it gonna do it? Gonna do it? Is it gonna do it? Little yes. squeeze. Oh, Peter. Sadly, not a big guess. You it's battled hard, big. but nothing's come out of the machine for you in this round. The scores stay as they were, with a truly exceptional score of two thousand nine hundred pounds. Very well done, Ellie. You Thank are you, today. Ben. It's been a very well played Thank to you, you. Uh, Peter. It's been really lovely, but I'm afraid with one thousand one hundred pounds, we have found your tipping point. Thank you for playing, Peter. Thank you. So, Ellie, as our champion, in a few moments, I'm going to ask you to put this chatbot counter into the machine. A little bit bigger than all the others, but this one is so much better because if you can get it out again, you're going to go home with ten thousand pounds. Okay. <laughs> Can Ellie master the machine by finding its jackpot tipping point? We'll find out after the break. For now, though, it's your chance for an amazing cash prize. For £15,000, text WIN to 63339. Text costs £1.50 plus one standard network rate message. Call 09041 613030. Calls cost £1.50 plus your network access charge. Go to the website, entries cost £1.50. Or post your name and phone number to TP213, PO Box 7558, Derby D10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 10am on Monday. With one hand. HSL Clever Comfort, proud sponsors of Tipping Point. Welcome back to the final part of Tipping Point. Ellie is our winner today and has managed to get £2,900, Ellie, which yeah. is a sensational <laughs> score. Very well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, so, look, you're a roofer by trade. Yes. How long have you been doing that? Uh, nearly two years now. How did you come by the art of roofing? Well, I had a lot of jobs which didn't go very well. I used to be a chef and an artist, but I stumbled on this one and I love it. So what does your day involve then? Terrifying heights, uh, a lot of bacon sandwiches, <laughs> tea. <laughs> it's quite fun. Uh, is there many other girls doing it? I've never met any others. Okay. I hope there are, though. Yeah, I'm sure there are, around yeah. and about, and you're flying the flag for it, but you absolutely love it, you say? I do, yeah, so much fun. And I, I work with my brothers and my dad, so right. we have a laugh. Well, look, I'm sure they're going to be thrilled to bits with how you've done so far today. You really have absolutely battered our machine. £2,900 is an amazing amount of money. If you were to get the jackpot counter out, though, what do you think you'd like to do with it? Well, uh, my boyfriend's had a hard few months. He's had some surgery. Oh, and goodness me. Yeah, so I would really love to treat him and take him on holiday to see some of his family and friends who live in the States. OK, if we get that jackpot counter out, I'm sure he would absolutely love to be treated to a lovely holiday. That'd be really special, so best luck, Ellie. Thank you. Time to find out whether Ellie's going to win our jackpot today. In a few moments, I'm going to ask you to put the jackpot counter into the machine. OK. If you want to go home with £10,000, just get it out again. If you want to go home with £20,000, see if you can get it to drop with that double counter that's still on the top shelf of Drop Zone 4. Here's how you'll do it. I'll show you six question categories. You'll choose to play one, two or three counters into the machine for each question. The more counters you play for, the harder the question will be. The more you win, the better your chances of getting the jackpot counter out. So all we need to do is put the jackpot counter into the machine, Ellie. What are you okay. thinking? OK. Well, I can see that there's a mystery counter hiding and there's also the double and you can't ignore the double. No. So I think I'm going to try and drop it in drop zone four, Let's please. do it. Fire up four, please. So be ready for this one, Ellie. Ooh, nicely tight to the edge. Yeah, that's where I wanted it. Squeeze it over. Yeah, it does. Down you come. Might take out the mystery straight away. Hopefully. There you go. Yeah, two counts drop in. £100 for those two. Takes us up to £3,000. And the one surreptitiously so hidden underneath that black counter, just see the edge of it, is a mystery counter. You've won a countryside escape for two people at the Coldwall Park Hotel. Oh, wow, lovely. Which sounds lovely, doesn't it? It does, thank you. So that's already a lovely prize sorted. Uh, and we've got the jackpot counter nice and tight to the edge of the machine in drop zone four. Uh, let's have a look at your end game subjects then, Ellie. This is what we have for you. Language, food and drink, geography, film, politics and music. You can play them in any order you like. So when you're ready, where do you want to start and for how many? I did say I was a chef, so <laughs> <laughs> I should be able to do quite well food and drink. I might embarrass myself, but I'm going to try three counters of food and drink. All right, we're going to start with food and drink for three, please. Key lime pie is the dessert that originates in which US state? California, Florida or Georgia? Hmm. Now, I've heard of the key limes because I know that they're a specific type of lime 
from an area. Yes. <laughs> and one I'm, of those areas. I think it's between California and Florida. Okay. And I know they're both very sunny kind of places where you would grow limes and things like that. It's, it's between the two, but I think I'll go for California. California? Yeah. Should we light it up? Yes, please. We're going California. So as a chef, you've we gone for the right state. It's key lime pie from California. Oh, it's Florida. Florida? Oh, I'm lucky. <laughs> Not to worry. Let's go back to the categories. So language, geography, film, politics, music. Next, I'll go for film for three, please. All right, film for three this time, please. What is the name of 007's American CIA agent ally who appears in several of the James Bond films? Ronnie Valance, Alec Trevelyan, or Felix Leiter? I've never heard of any of these. <laughs> have you ever watched James Bond? I have. I get, I get quite distracted by all the noise and the action. <laughs> I'm not, I never really pay attention to the story. There, there's quite a lot of noise and distraction, yeah. Uh, I recognise the second name. I don't know if it's that I've heard it somewhere else before, but I... That's the only one I recognise. So Ronnie Valance, Alec Trevelyan, or Felix Leiter? I'm going to go for Ronnie Valance. No, no, Alec Trevelyan. I'm going to go for Alec Trevelyan, because that was Tre the one that I thought of first. <laughs> yeah, and then you changed your mind. You change I, don't, your mind? I don't know. I'm, I'm just panicking now. <laughs> Alec Trevelyan. <laughs> All right, we're going with Alec Trevelyan. James Bond's CIA agent ally. Is it Alec Trevelyan? Felix Leiter. Oh, I didn't even consider that one. <laughs> Alec Trevelyan is 006 in Goldeneye. Oh. So you maybe watched uh, Goldeneye yeah. and, and he was sort of quite a key character in that. I like rom-coms better. <laughs> <laughs> less noise, less distraction. Yeah. All right, let's go back to <laughs> the categories. Considering how the first two went, I think I might calm down a little bit and go for politics for two. All right, please. we're going to hit politics for two counters, please. Who was the US president directly before Barack Obama? George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, or Ronald Reagan? I think I know this one. Right. <laughs> Finally. Good, good, good. I'm going to go George Bush. George Bush? Yeah. Should we light it up? Yes, please. Okay, we're going to go with George W. Bush. Let's see if you've got the right president. It would be great see. to get things started. Is the answer George W. Bush? Yeah, that's more like <laughs> Finally. It. Well done, Ellie. <laughs> right, two counters. Okay, uh, drop zone four, please, then, Ben. Four up, please. Okay, so it's not bringing the jackpot down. It might bring the double yeah, down. Yeah, it, it might just move into space. Oh. <laughs> okay, one more. Drop zone four. Yes, please. Line it up, please. <laughs> go on, go on, go on, get that, yes, get yes, that. Yes, yes, Is it going to get that? Can't stay right on it now. Don't you sneak off. There you go. Lovely stuff. Well done, Ellie. We're on the edge of that top shelf. And £50 swept in as well. Great. So we can get the you. money up to 3050 And we've got that jackpot counter moving. Great. Right, let's go back to the categories. We're halfway. Language, geography and music. Uh, I'll go for language for two, please. Language for two this time, please. The name of which animal is used as a slang term for £25? Gibbon, walrus or pony? Well, Ben... I'm of Cockney heritage, Are so you? this is my kind of area now. So I'm going to go for pony. You going for pony? Yeah. Do you want to light it up? I'll embarrass my dad otherwise. Yeah. Light it up. Please. We're going with pony. <laughs> light it up, please. Cockney heritage should be all over this. Is it a pony? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'm shouting myself then. Brilliant. Lovely stuff. Drop zone four. Yes, please. Fire it up. So come on, let's get that jackpot counter down. Let's really turn this game around. Try and get around that little gap against the edge. That's a ghost drop for you. Just took all the energy out of it. That might squeeze that double down now. There we go. And there's a fair bit of money on the bottom shelf there that make it a little closer. 50 pounds drops in. Takes to 3,100 in the machine. One more to go. OK, uh, drop zone four again, please. Four up, please. Come on, then, Ellie. Oh. Now, 
Maybe. I think it might just squeeze that silver one right behind it. Just squeeze it over there, line it's it okay. up. Okay. Yeah. So it's lined up very nicely. We'll take a couple more here. Yeah, two more drop in. Let's put another 100 pounds in, Ellie, up to 3,200 pounds. And that jackpot can is still sitting there, nice and tight on the top shelf. Let's go back to the categories. Geography, as hard as I try and practice, is not my area, but I'm going to try two counters. All right, we're going geography for two. Located at the head of Port Phillip Bay, Melbourne is the capital of which Australian state? New South Wales, Tasmania, or Victoria? I've heard of Melbourne. Good. <laughs> it's a start. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's Tasmania. I feel like that's more of a rural place. Okay. Rather than a city like yeah. Melbourne. But I feel like I would relate Melbourne to New South Wales, so I'm going to go New South Wales. New South Wales? Yes, please. Can we light it up? Yes, please. We're going to light up New South Wales. So it's the capital of one of those states. Is it New South Wales? Oh, it's Victoria. <laughs> Not my day today. <laughs> oh, Never mind. Frustrated. Right, let's go back to the categories. We have one left, which is music. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to need three mm. to get it. So I'm going to have to try. Let's go for it. Go for three, right. please. Music for three, please. In February 2019, who became the first female artist to replace herself at the top of the official UK singles chart? Katy Perry, Ariana Grande, or Kylie Minogue? Ariana Grande, I think she released an album recently. Ish. And Kylie Minogue, I haven't heard much about her lately. Or Katy Perry, but I'm not really up to date with this kind of music, so. I'm going to take a guess at Ariana Grande, please. Light it up? Yes, please. We're going to light up Ariana Grande, please. So I really, really need this. You do. Is it Ariana Grande? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. Well done, Ellie. Give me right. the chance. <laughs> we need three lovely counters dropping on the right-hand side. Drop to four? Yes, please. Fire it up. Okay, let's see if we can get some money. Bring that silver one in the middle down. There you go. Something. A couple might go for us here, Ellie. Yeah, yes. three counts across the tipping point, 150 pounds. Money goes up nicely, 3,350. Two more to go. I stick the drop zone four, please. Four up again, please. Oh, it's not far away. It's not far Close. away if it hits that one first. There you go. Go on, go on, yes, go on, go on, yes, go on. Go on. Yes, yes. Come on. Well done, <laughs> Ellie. Two counters drop in. Hundred pounds mm -hmm. takes to three thousand four hundred and fifty pounds. And we're on the bottom shelf. Finally, yeah. finally. Close. And one more to go. I don't know if it's possible, but I don't want to give up. So drop zone four, please. Good stuff. <laughs> Five drop zone four. That might not help us with the jackpot. <laughs> and let's see what goes on. Ellie's going to go over. Ooh, he's tried to get there for you. No. Good try. Mm, Ellie. Uh -oh. So, look, we're out of questions and categories, but it's not over because I'm going to offer you one last chance to leave today with £10,000. As things stand, you've got 3450 You can walk away with that money right now, or you could trade it for three final counters to put into the machine in the hope of getting that jackpot counter out. If you decide to take the trade, though, Ellie, nothing else has any value, so you'll leave with £10,000. Could potentially leave with twenty thousand pounds, as tough as it would be, because that double's still there, mm -hmm. or you leave with nothing at all. The question is, would three counters be enough? There's a slight gap on the top shelf, right above the jackpot. So I would love to risk it, but I don't think that would be sensible. So I think I'm going to take the money. Are you quite sensible as a rule? No, never. But you... <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't say goodbye to that amount of money. It's a lovely amount of money. I'll ask you one last time. Would you like to take the money or the trade? I'll take the money, please. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Ellie. £3,450 is a really lovely amount of money. And I'm sure we'll get you and your boyfriend over to America to see yes. some of his family and have a fantastic trip. Oh, thank you. But, of course, you are quite a risk taker. And I'm sure there's part of you that just wonders, could it go if you'd taken the trade? Drop one. There. Oh. Whoa, that no. track. Oh, we oh, got scared of it. It's close. It is really <laughs> close. Drop two. And 
think that's going to do anything. Is it too far away? So it would have come down to this. This was the third and final drop. And oh, that would have been on it. <laughs> Is it going to go in, though? I'm not sure. It's going to get very close. Oh, no. It's going to get right close. On the line. It's going to get close. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, it's stayed. <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> How are you feeling now? I'm happy now, yeah. You made the right decision. We got it right to the edge. But £3,450 is a really, really lovely amount of money, Ellie. And, of course, you've won your overnight stay for two as well. Have you enjoyed yourself? I've had the best day. Thank you so you much. You've played brilliant. Thank Congratulations. You. So there you go. Ellie's leaving with £3,450. Maybe if she just answered a few more correctly, that chatbot counter would have gone because we got it right there on the tipping point with the trade. It just didn't want to drop. Join us next time when the fate of four more players will hang in the balance on tipping point. Goodbye.